Why do you think people have such an infinity for Wanda and Vision? Why? I think people really connect to Wanda and Vision because I, there are two ways you can go as a, a human being. You can either have your trauma, um, you know, like Wanda has had, have have your trauma turn you into a, a person who just hides or a person who just is very powerful. And I think Wanda in particular is someone who's taken her trauma and it's just made her that much more powerful and she's survived. And then she's found this unique love in a synthesoid, um, someone who's, who's in spite of the fact that he is mechanical, um, has found this wonderful humanity. Uh, so I, I actually think it's love. It's the love between Wanda and Vision, and that's why they like them. Well, I think uh, it's it's possible that the two of us identify with them as a couple as well, because I'm always I always approach things a little bit more from the logic side, and um, I'm always interested in what this thing called emotion might be. Right, and when I get angry, my hair just rises up. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. How did this project come about and how did you feel about working on a project in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Well, we were absolutely thrilled when this project came up because Marvel is just so cool and and our kids loved it. And suddenly we thought, oh, if we're working on a Marvel property, our kids will think we're cool. They don't. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> that will never happen. But um, but but the Marvel dream did come true when uh, Matt Shackman, who was a friend of mine from Yale, gave us a call, I think a year and a half ago, and pitched us the, the basic high concept of um, Wanda and Vision in the suburbs through the ages. And um, and no. And what's going on? Why? Um, and we were like, that sounds incredible. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and from there it was off to the races. Explain how theme songs helped establish the feel for sitcoms through the years and how you captured that for WandaVision. Our job for WandaVision was to really establish time and place and era. Um, so where the movies might have like a typeface go across like Segovia. 2009 or whatever, um, our job was to set that. And um, growing up, we watched sitcoms across the decades that would really set that feeling of like, I Love Lucy takes place in the 50s, big bands are playing, um, you know, in the 60s. And all those shows had iconic theme songs that would be repeated every week, they got into your head and they became part of you. And I think that um, that's the other role of the, I mean, that's the other um, job of the theme song to sort of, to get into, to get into your head. To pull you into the world through earworms. <laughs> you touched on this um, briefly, but what kind of research did you do to identify the style for each era? If you could provide an example, um, contrast one era from another, generally speaking in terms of theme songs. We um, we did a lot of research uh, for Wandavision for you know into theme songs, but in a way we didn't have to because we were we were such TV kids growing up and we watched so many reruns. Um, Our lives were research. All those hours in front of the TV as a kid, where your mom was like, "Go out and play." We we're like, "No, I'm going to need to know <laughs> this this era of theme songs because uh, I'm for going to get a work, job." Mom to get a job one day making theme songs um so the research was there because these songs from all of these different eras lived in our bodies and uh and we listened but we did go back and you know just as adults to uh to revisit them and it was a pleasure just a pleasure to listen to all this old gold from from the 50s 60s 70s 80s and 90s and our orchestrator, Dave Metzger, who also is our orchestrator for Frozen and Coco, um, and Frozen 2, uh, he also has extensive knowledge of what instruments were used when, as someone who 
lived through these decades as well and watched all of these shows. And he brought in a lot of his, his great knowledge of, of instruments. Okay. Describe the themes for the first two episodes and how you landed on the idea. Um, the first two episodes of WandaVision take place in the 50s and the 60s. And um, I remember the, the script had a little description of, oh, they had even had some dummy lyrics that we kind of helped pattern our song after. Mm-hmm. Um, but we uh, wanted to create um, something that was really about love for the first one, about this newlywed couple getting married. Um, we wanted to give it a snap and a bounce and a jazziness to it, but we also wanted it to feel like an iconic love. So we we made the the top note love. <laughs> That's true. Um, but we also wanted to give them we we present the problem of the first decade of how will this duo fit in and pull through oh by sharing a love. We basically saying love is going to conquer their challenges they're going to experience in the first episode. Um, and with the second one, that that episode is much it's for, it's in the 60s. Um, it's more of a bewitched or um, what's the other one? The phenomena. Uh, um, no, like uh, the I Dream of Jeans. Oh, yes. Kind of kind of show. And it's sexier and it's uh, flirtier. So we wanted to we we made it a smaller ensemble. We gave it that sort of fun party feel. And uh, uh, we had people just saying WandaVision in, yes. a, in sort of a, I don't know, I don't, it, it's a little bit like that naughty. Austin, that Austin Powers yeah. kind of um, the British swingers vibe. And this is the last question. Describe the process working together and with the filmmakers on these songs. Hmm. The process really began with a wonderful conversation with Matt Shackman and Jack Schaefer, um, the makers of the show, uh, where they, you know, they explained this incredible high concept uh, storytelling they were going to do using episodic sitcom TV to tell this epic, epic Marvel story. Um, and we were very lucky because we share, we we're around the same age, we were all of the rerun generation. So we shared a lot of the same references. And Bobby had actually gone to school with Matt Shackman mm-hmm. and worked together before. Um, they had directed, Matt Shackman directed a version of The Tempest at Yale for which Bobby wrote songs. Um, so they had kind of a shorthand there. Um, and then we just took a deep dive into researching the decades and the music. And I gotta say, this doesn't happen very often, but. Um... After they had finished pitching it to us, and pretty much everything they showed us, uh, we, you, we're used to um, giving a little bit more of a pushback um, than we ever did with with Matt and Jack because we were just always so sold with everything they, they gave us that we were always like, yes, <laughs> um, and it, it felt strange to be so positive because I'm I'm usually grouchy and kind of I, I'm always like, well, what if it was this? What if it was not? Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I, this time. This time I really, I was just very excited by everything they, they brought us. And the truth is I, I would wake up, maybe even there were two weeks of where I would wake up almost every morning with, I know what the, I know what the next theme song is. <laughs> here's the hook and here's what it is. And I would like write the lyrics in a towel out, out of the shower. Um, she would write the lyrics while uh, dressed in a towel. Dressed in a towel. <laughs> the, the lyrics the are day. not on a towel. It's somewhere. the end of the day, guys. Thank you. That was great, you guys. 